This is what narcissists do every day when you go no contact. You may be wondering what the narcissist is up to once you've got no contact. Because of course, while they were with you, they were heavily dependent on you. You were a potent source of supply to them. So what do they do when you're not there? How do they get fuel? They hate being alone because they hate themselves. So how do they keep moving forward? What motivates or distracts them? What are they pursuing? What are they doing now with all of this free time? What are they yielding themselves to? In this video, I am going to be giving you nine things that the narcissist will be indulging in when you have got no contact. One, they will start looking for new supply. They will be looking for someone to give them attention, validation, praise and acknowledgement because you have rejected them, you've got no contact. So now they are without a source of supply and they are left with a narcissistic injury, a blow to their fragile self-esteem, which initially triggers anger, resentment and intense desire to regain control because in this state they are depressed they are moody because they have no external means to feel good about themselves. But then they start to search for this drug, known as narcissistic supply, that they are addicted to to feed their mask and avoid their true self. And when they're searching for narcissistic supply, they get excited. They become very eager and enthusiastic because they're thinking about all of the possibilities that they are yet to discover. They will speak to random people. They will act flirtatious, provocative, seductive and inviting. They will love bomb them. They will text them, call them and send pictures. Or they may just like and comment on random people's pictures. But this is as good as it gets for them. Because as we know, after the love bombing comes the devaluation, as no one could ever satisfy their hunger. So they're always left yearning for more. Which is why COVID narcissists will often start arguments with people for no reason, because then it makes them feel superior. But somatic narcissists may be more interested in hookups and escorts because they derive their self-worth primarily from their external appearance. They use their bodies to get attention, admiration and validation from other people and they will do things that they would never do in your presence. Things that they can only do when they are away from you. Because they have to preserve their image. They have to make everyone think that they are a wonderful person. But the moment you have got no contact, they soon forget about you. Because you're no longer visible or present. So they stop thinking about you once they haven't seen you for a certain amount of time because they lack object constancy. So they have an inability to maintain a bond with another person, especially when they are angry, disappointed or frustrated with their actions, which means that any moments you share together will be totally wasted. It will be as if it never even occurred, which is why they will then cross any limit or boundary they're supposed to adhere to
two, they will engage in fantasy. Once you have gone no contact with the narcissist, you may see that they have soon love bombed, devalued and even discarded their new supply. So you may expect them to be miserable. But really, their power lies in fantasy. In the activity of imagining impossible or improbable things. Which is why even while they were with you and they were devaluing you, their mind was always on something else. And it's no different even after you've got no contact, because fantasy is their means of escape. It serves as a fundamental psychological mechanism that helps to maintain their grandiose self-image. They sustain fantasies as a self-regulation tool to cope with their stress. They have excessive involvement in fantasies regarding unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty or ideal love. Things are impossible and cannot exist in reality. Even if they could exist in reality, the narcissist would eventually become dissatisfied and thus destroy their manifestations. But rarely will a narcissist ever take the steps to bring these visions into reality. And instead they will settle for whatever they can find. while a psychopath will wait it out and they may wait for a very long time because their fantasies are enough to satisfy them until they get what they want. The narcissist will latch on to anything they can find while they are in a vulnerable state but eventually they will reveal their grandiosity and then their relationship or venture will inevitably fail. And this is when they will start fantasizing of ways to punish you. Three, they will act on their vengeful thoughts. They will become vindictive and they will seek to punish you because they feel like they have been wronged. They blame everything on you. So now they are holding a grudge at the harboring resentment because they feel threatened, insecure or offended by you but they don't know how to work through conflict. So they develop this get even mentality to where they may weaponize information against you and they may belittle you to elevate themselves at your expense. Four, they will smear you. They will talk about you behind your back. They will say things to your friends or family. Because they love gossiping. It's the dupest delight. It gives them an emotional boost. A thrill from successfully cheating or deceiving people. When they get away with it, it gives them fuel. Which is why they will do anything for it. They will even betray their own partner or their own child. They will say things to anyone who will listen. If it means that they can bring people to their side. Because all they care about is fuel. They round up, enlist and enroll their minions and enablers because they feel strength in numbers. They believe that a group of people has more influence and power than one person, which is why they will throw you under the bus for the sake of their recruitment process, and they won't think anything of it. Because there is no loyalty with narcissists. They will cause people to suffer if it means that they can gain a personal advantage for themselves. So they will tell lies about you. They will smear your name. They will ruin your reputation. Because they're envious of your achievements, qualities, possessions, relationships and connections. They feel like it takes something away from them. 
so they want to take it away from you. When they are feeling worthless and insignificant in comparison to you, they will focus their time on destroying you. Rather than investing that time into themselves and exploring their own interests. Because the only thing that brings them any sort of joy is ruining other people's lives. Since there is no depth, truth or substance to their own. Five, they are planning to hoover you. If you were a good source of supply for the narcissist and you went no contact, they would immediately be thinking about how they're going to rekindle the relationship with you. They will be thinking about how they can rekindle the flames, the interest and feeling that you used to have for them, because they want you to think about it and feel it again, so that they can get supply from you. They will stalk you on social media. They will look at your pictures. And they will try to find out if there's anything you're working on. If there's something you're involved in. So that they can compliment you on it. Or so that they can give you false promises. Or they will even make threats or use guilt trips. They will do anything to try to worm their way in. To make you like them or trust them again. In order to gain some advantage for themselves. But even though it seems as though they're trying to draw you back into the relationship. Things will return to being toxic again. 6. Attention seeker behaviour. If you are resistant to their hoover attempts. They will resort to attention seeker behaviour instead. They will blatantly attempt to attract notice with provocative, overly dramatic and undignified actions. They will use inappropriate tactics. They will do anything to get your attention. To make themselves feel important. They will try to distract you. They will show off. They will parade themselves, their possessions or their accomplishments. They want to be celebrated. They want to feel admired. Because now they feel like you disapprove of or loathe them. They feel common, contemptible, unimpressive, unrespected, unvalued. Which is why they will do anything to get attention from you. Whether it's positive or negative. They will try to make themselves appear more attractive to you, even though it could have been further from the truth. They will flaunt their new supply, but they will become agitated and intimidated if you've achieved something for yourself. And they may even become hostile and lash out. They do this because they're insecure. They're constantly looking for attention that they wouldn't normally receive. Because in reality, they're not satisfied with themselves or their life. But they will hide it and pretend that they're above you while they're making fun of you. And they will even go to great lengths to enroll their minions and enablers and the hopes of finally getting a sense of belonging somewhere because they couldn't have that with you. 7. They will stalk you. This is the next level of their pervertedness and depravity. When you don't accept them they sink to a state of even lower moral standards and behaviour to where they then end up stalking you. Because at this point they've accepted that they're not going to get you to notice them. So now all they can do is watch you from afar. All they can do is observe you attentively over a period of time. To where they now have to exercise caution and restraint. They have to remember the facts and circumstances of how you didn't want to be involved with them. They have to be mindful 
and take that into account. So now, although they may be spying on you, they can only do it without getting too close to you, without being closely involved, because they don't have the option to partake in your existence, you've already rejected and disapproved of them. While they wanted to continue the relationship with you, and to remain as close to you as much as possible, so now they may be angry, they may be huffing and puffing. They may be fogging up the screen on their phone as they're stalking your social media profile. But not because you did anything to them. You just wanted to protect yourself. You recognize that you were not deserving of abuse. So now they're angry because they realize that you deserve better. Because you crushed their sense of entitlement. Which then triggered them to reflect back on themselves. They're angry because they have to deal with themselves now. But at the same time they're trying to detach from themselves by spying on you. It's a form of escapism. They're trying to escape from their miserable lives. And what better way for them to do that than by watching someone who is actually enjoying themselves. And that is why they are spying on you. Because you were a good source of supply to them. But now you've got no contact and they can't find anyone to replace you. So spying on you gives them a sense of control. It makes them feel like they're still involved in your life. And it feels better for them to be involved in your life than for them to be involved in their own. Eight. They will seek old sources of supply. Seeking a new source of supply takes extra effort for a narcissist and they're very lazy. So they want an easy target. They want an open door. They want someone who they already left on the shelf without an explanation. So that person may be seeking a sense of resolve. Because it's not just you. There may be many other people who are still trauma bonded to this narcissist. They never put all of their eggs in one basket. They like to have a finger in every pie. They like to be involved in and have influence over many people's lives. Because then whenever they're bored or lonely, they can call them up and raise a false alarm. They can exaggerate their situation or warn other people about an imagined threat just so that they can fail to get assistance when a real threat appears. But these won't always be intimate sources of supply. Sometimes they may depend on their family or even your family. They will fall back on anyone who will enable them. And these people will typically adore them. They will put the narcissist on a pedestal They will comfort and nurture them as if they're a spoiled, rotten child stuck in an adult's body. They will do anything to get supply. They can meet a random stranger who they do not know. Someone who they have no interest in knowing anything about. And yet they will still spend time with them if it means that they can get supply. Because all they care about is attention. They don't care about who they get it from. Which is so shallow and superficial. It's so fake. Because they hate who they are. So they can't be alone even for a day. They cannot be on their own. Which means that they have to seek someone. And that someone could be anyone. But maybe not you because you've seen the real them. And they do not want anything to do with themselves. And that is their karma. That is their ultimate punishment. Number 9. 
Nine, they will indulge in their addictions. They will get drunk. They will use recreational drugs. They will gamble. They will engage in excessive shopping and spending. They will play video games all day. They will watch pornography. They feed their fantasies just as they try to feed a fantasy to you. And this is why they couldn't connect to you. This is why they couldn't be intimate with you. Because they have an unrealistic sense of what intimacy should be like. It's based on pictures and ideas that they have formed in their mind, which stimulates them mentally in a way that reality cannot compete with because they are divorced from reality. They showed no connection to what is real or true. They are only connected to reality where they are with you, where they are present in the act of intimacy, which is why they run away from it because they don't want to be feel vulnerable. They had traumatic or neglectful childhood experiences to where they experience inconsistent or excessive praise or criticism so they will never allow themselves to be vulnerable because they don't ever want to feel that way again but when they are looking at a screen and looking at random people it does not require them to be vulnerable so then that's exciting to them and it's why they also enjoy getting drunk and getting high it's why they enjoy love bombing and doing all sorts of unexpected things to where they may even criticize and devalue you. You might not understand it because you're still connected to reality, but they're in this whole other world having a wonderful time at your expense. Because it's a form of excessive praise upon themselves. It makes them feel very good. They experience a high from being disconnected from reality. Because then they don't have to feel the low of their true identity. And this is why they hate being alone. Because when they're alone, they're left to reflect on their shame and insecurity. With their rotten, decomposing, depraved and fragmented self which is something they do not want to deal with because it makes them feel trapped or oppressed. It's too overwhelming for them, so they run away from it. And they will make up any excuse to do that, to run away from their shadow, because the energy is so dark, heavy and dense. And their life is all about pretending to be someone or something they're not which is why they hate themselves. Even though it may seem like they're concerned about their own well-being and happiness more than anyone else, it may seem like they show a deep appreciation of their own worth and virtue because they are overly concerned with their desires, needs and interests, but it is actually the opposite. Their behavior and opinions have developed from their own self-hatred, which is what they take out on you. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.